Ah, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. This is Mr. Shakespeare here again with you on the 6th of July, 2023. I'm here with psychic medium and remote viewer, Liz Pross. How are you doing today, Liz? Great, thank you. Okay, this is another, I know we've done Martin before, Martin Armstrong, but this was, this came in on a request for probe on your website, psychiclizpross.com, which is where anybody who wants a probe done can suggest a probe needs to fill out the questionnaire somebody on our group did that and they've asked to do asked us to do martin armstrong which was on our list to do again anyway so this worked out quite well but i'm going to go with the, uh, the contributors questions on this one mainly so liz uh if you can uh get a connection with martin armstrong please Oh, yeah, he's wide awake and raring to go. Okay, but it's not the today, Martin Armstrong, we need. We oh. need Martin Armstrong on the 30th of December, 2023, please. He's got some liver problems. Okay, 30th of December, 2023. Uh, December 30th, December 30th, 2023, 2023, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What would you like to know? Okay, reading the questions, top to bottom. What is happening with the Ukrainian and the Russian war? today as you know as of now as of right now still ongoing Ooh. um is the conflict in ukraine and russia has it been frozen all this time there was talk i'll give a bit of background to that question there was talk that the that the West the Ukrainians wanted to freeze, somehow freeze the conflict so that they could get more weapons and stuff into them. Um, I can't imagine why the Russians would want to do that, but that's that was the talk. They were trying to freeze the conflict so that they can restock and rearm. Has that been, has that happened? Has, uh, has there been like a, a bit of a freezing time? Yes, there has been a bit of a freezing time. Listen, what I'm picking up on coming not from Martin Armstrong, coming in from somewhere else, what I'm getting is the Russians are all over the Ukrainian intelligence right now. Okay. They know every single move that is going to be made on a big level, maybe not on a small level, but on a large scale, they know what's going on. They have managed to hack in and infiltrate all communication systems. Okay. Um, did the Russians launch their, well, he's put counteroffensive or offensive um, in 2023, anytime, i.e., from June to December 2023? Sorry, what was the question? So they, they've launched, so like a massive attack, basically. Well, did they launch any kind of offensive? There was all this talk about Ukrainians doing it, which apparently has been gone for four weeks, but did the Russians do it? They're constantly doing it. They're constantly launching attacks. Um, it's just not being reported, is what I'm getting. Okay. Um... Okay, we need to, we're going to have to jump a few years. Well, hang on, hang on. Sorry. There's one question here that's got three parts to it because it's three years, but I'd have to get you to move him out. But one part we can do. What was the biggest political, sorry, what was the biggest geopolitical change in 2023? What was the biggest geopolitical change? This is for the world, right? Yeah. Well, he, it's hard to pin down. Um, I feel like first thing is Russia. 
There's talks of lifting the sanctions. These are underground talks. The European countries cannot live under these sanctions. It's almost like they've sanctioned themselves. Exactly what they did. Yep. Okay, that's what he's telling me. And he says there's talk of lifting some of these sanctions or loosening some of these sanctions just to ease the inflation uh, in Europe. It's huge. Um, what else is another geopolitical event? The U.S. economy. What are you saying about the U.S. economy? It's almost like people are starting to revolt against the current administration. Yes. So on both sides of the political aisle, you're starting to see heavy, heavy criticism against the current administration. Everybody's fed up. This economy has gone on for far too long. You're going to start seeing a lot more digging into the Bidens the Biden family, the Biden administration, corruption being exposed. There's been a lot of any UFO whistleblower stuff. No, no, he's not really interested in that. OK, um, what about there's something with Venezuela, he keeps telling me. Something with oil or their economy. With oil. Their politics. Uh, who's in charge of Venezuela? I'm sorry, I don't know this. Not do I. Is it Maduro? Hold on. Uh... Yeah, it is Maduro. No, maybe not. This is in psychic information. I'm looking this up. So... Let me, while you're looking that up, Mr. Shakespeare, <clears throat> there's an attempt to overthrow or something with the Venezuelan government. There is a lot of corruption there. There is a lot of upheaval going on, protests, I feel. Uh, it's almost like an awakening for Venezuela. And the world will have their eyes on Venezuela, albeit briefly. But for him, for somebody who studies this stuff, mm -hmm. that's that's really big. He's excited about it. Okay, it is Maduro, Nicolas Maduro. It is Maduro. Okay, um, he's excited about that. Right. He thinks that the current government needs to be overthrown. Um, it's not really democratic. He just, you know, he says Venezuela has so much potential, but that potential is being blocked by the corruption at the top. So he's talking about Venezuela. Okay. All right. Um, we need to move him out till the same day, 2024, to ask the same question. What were the biggest geopolitical changes? in 2024, as he's now on the 30th of December, 2024. Okay. Well, the, the election is huge in the US. <laughs> he's not very helpful. I'm like, why are you not very helpful? Because people think helpful. that by having this new president, this moderate, again, is he a moderate? Well, he, he's saying, well, not really. He, he's just masking that he's a moderate. But you'll see when this unfolds, he's telling me. Um, he's saying that the election was huge. The economy is in recovery slightly. It's just really starting to get into a recovery. 25 is looking better. There's a lot of stuff going on with China. Um, and I'm saying, what's going on with China? China are really starting to see. They're starting to really have the upper hand here now. 
they have managed to infiltrate every country in the world, he's saying. They have, they have influence in every country. And now you're going to start seeing a push to use that influence, right? Now China can start to influence political matters. They can actually start to call the shots because... They have structured it in such a way, knowingly, that it would wreak financial havoc if they start making really sharp maneuvers, really sharp turns. Like if they start pulling something out of a particular country, that country will fall on its knees economically. So it's all about not upsetting the Chinese and really placating them. Okay. According to Martin Armstrong. Okay, so now we have to take him out till December the 30th, 2025, and ask the same question. Okay, or... that's that's really far out, but obviously we're just getting broad overviews at the moment. Uh let's see. Okay, what would you like to know? Uh the same question. What were the biggest geopolitical events of this year? 2025. Corruption. A lot of corruption has been exposed around the world. People are really starting to voice their concerns over the amount of corruption there is, particularly Australia. He keeps saying Australia. A lot of corruption going on in Australia, a lot of missing and embezzled money. Just, uh, I feel like a lot of unmasking. And okay. I think we're starting to see with this unmasking of the corruption, he's telling me, we're starting to see more free speech, not necessarily like it used to be, but certainly the public are starting to control the narrative more than the news media. Now, that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. It won't last long. Right. Because don't forget what he exposed in 2024, which is the Chinese have a strong arm. And when everybody figures out this is what China has been up to, they're going to start, you know, the, the ones that want to hush the citizens up, they're going to start looking to the Chinese for advice. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, whilst we're there, at the end of 2025, one of the questions is, did the BRICS nations become the dominant global trading bloc? Okay, can you explain to our listeners what the BRICS is, please? Because they so, won't... Yeah, these are the other, I mean, BRICS, it's become a, the, it's actually become a bit more than BRICS now. It was originally BRICS was Brazil, Russia, India, China, um, but other nations have applied, Saudi Arabia has applied, Iran has applied. These are all the other nations other than the sort of, the, the, the West, if you like. Yeah, so the West is really um, Australia, Canada, the US, and most of Western Europe. Um, so these are the other nations that are trying to set up a different trading block because they're fed up with being cancelled out by the West. So um, this is, I think, partly down to China and their sort of Silk Road, whatever they call it, uh, where they can trade with all the nations that are basically accessible via roadways um, because obviously China has a problem with seaways, it understands that the seaways could get blocked. So it's trying to make provision. Um, it's one of the important things about Ukraine because Ukraine would be part of that. 
So railways would have to run or freight or trucks would have to, have to run through Ukraine as well, as part from a lot of other places, including Russia, of course. Um, so the BRICS nations have got together. They are, you know, they basically don't want to be led by the dollar denominated US. So, and all the institutions, the Kowtow, you know, United Nations, IMF, Bank, World Bank, all of those American operations. They're trying to, you know, what they're saying is we don't need any of those. They don't benefit us. So the questioner has asked, has the BRICS nations at the end of 2025 become the dominant trading bloc? In other words, more dominant than the West. No. No? No. Okay. Right. Um, so the next two, three questions need you to put him out till the end of 20, sorry, put him out to 2030, which I know is a long way off. So yeah, that's a long way off. He really needs to work on his eating. Um, he may want? not eat very much, but he, uh, he would do with going vegan. <laughs> anyway, all right. Have you got him out at the end of 2030? Like very rich food. Yes. Uh, where am I going? 2030. Sorry. Uh, December 30th, December 30th, 2030, 2030, 60. I like rich food too. I get it. Uh, 20. Where am I going? 2030. Okay. Go ahead. So the, the same question that was there in 25. Have the BRICS members now become the dominant trading bloc, global trading block? No, but they've definitely increased their power. Okay. Now, what I'm getting coming through, like bleeding in here, is this is really the U.S. will wake up when it's far too late. Mm. It's almost like what he's saying to me, the U.S. is so insular. It's only concerned with what's going on inside the country and not so much what's going on outside. There's so many internal problems going on in the U.S. We're all pitted against one another. There's gender wars. There's drug problems. There's the increase in crime. There's mass shootings. There's corruption. There's so much, and, and, and the outside world, they love this. Why? Because we're not paying attention to what they're doing. Right. And what they're doing, what I'm picking up very strongly in 2030 is this is all in a maneuver to take down the US as a global superpower. They know exactly what they're doing. We have so many, you know, as a big country, we have so many problems, so many problems. And we're so divided. We can't even see what's happening before our very eyes, which is we are being taken down. Yes, and the way to do that is to put one against the other because then whether it's gender, whether it's race, color, income, it doesn't matter. Whilst you're fighting each other, you're not looking at the controllers who are looking down from above. You're looking at each other instead of above. Always Everybody looking. is picking each other apart within the US, right? And it just continues. And I'm gonna go one even further here, okay? These outside countries, they know this. They are masters at psychological warfare. How do you think they control their populations, people? They control it through propaganda. They control it through censorship, accessing information. They know this. Now, we have more access here in the US and in the Western countries, but I know we're going to pit everyone against one another and we're going to use platforms to do so, right? 
and and we'll just watch it naturally unfold. They don't have a clue what we're doing out here. And this is where, and we've done this in many probes, Mr. Shakespeare. I mean, we, look, we've been doing this for a while now and we keep getting the same thing. This is the takeover. This is the, the, the downfall of America. And yet again, once again, we've uncovered this information. This is where they're taking down the US and the West. And if you think it's not going to affect you, think again, because the more we decrease in the West as these superpowers, you know, a lot of people are riding on the US coattails. Look, I'm pulling all this psychically. I, you know me, I'm not a political person. I could care less, but a lot of people are riding or a lot of countries are riding on the coattails of the US. If the US is going down, they're going down with it. And before it's too late, this has taken years, decades to build this reputation and it is being eroded. And then we will no longer have the upper hand with trading, with economy, with the dollar. That, that's what's coming in in this probe. I don't know if you wanna to add to that, Mr. Shakespeare, but that's what I'm getting. Well, that's part of the plan, isn't it? So the, the communist takeover of America, I mean, they, they need to subjugate America. One of the ways to do it is to get America vested in pointless things that America have been involved in and putting one against the other, you know, divide and conquer all the time. One of the biggest things that America could ever do is to wake up and look upwards, look at the people who are doing all of this. Don't look across the aisle, look upwards because you are being manipulated. Okay, well, you've just answered the question I was going to ask about what's happening in America. Uh, Your feet are on the desk, aren't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm just asking one, you've just answered the question that I was going to ask about, um, well, the questioner asked about how America was doing. So the last question of this is, how is Europe, how is Europe doing in 2030? How is Europe doing? 2030. It's tanked because if America goes down, Europe is going down with it. Europe would never substitute as a superpower. Too dependent upon all these other countries. We're too dependent on the big wigs for the oil, for the gas, for the supplies the goods too dependent we've given over that that's what i'm pulling that's according to his personal thoughts feelings and opinions not mine but it's like we're now starting to wake up to see how dependent we are but we can never reverse that when you have and his example which is these countries producing your pharmaceuticals you're screwed Yeah. Hmm. So there you go. What a positive note to end on. <laughs> what, 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 anything you would like to add, Mr. Shakespeare? Uh, come to Liz Cross YouTube channel to feel good at the end of the video. <laughs> Well, Sorry point. about that, but I can only report the truth, right? I can only report that. Yeah. No, it was a good probe. I mean, it correlates with some of the ones that we've done before, some of the information coming out. I mean, basically, Europe is doing it to, uh, sorry, America is doing for Europe, Europe is doing for itself, and they're both going down the tubes. Yeah. And uh, the rest of the world are going, okay, carry on. Because the issues that we are having here, and I, I'm not saying they're not important issues. Of course they are. But it, it's like the issue, the main issue. It, they shouldn't be the main issues. They should be, okay, this is part of the issue. We need to work on a solution 
because ultimately we have to stand together and it's just not working. And that's exactly what these other countries want. Exactly what they want. Yeah. I mean, recently, wow. a couple of days ago, it was, uh, it was the 4th of July, which is American Independence Day. What is American Independence Day? It was their celebration of independence from the tyrannical British rule of the crown. Um, that's why, you know, you fought to get away from the rule of the crown and to become a republic, not a democracy, but a republic. And if you carry on, if America carries on on the, on the scope that it's doing, especially under the current administration, you're going to be riding that train right back down to dependency again. You will not be the premier trading nation of the world. Don't forget, it's America's to lose mm -hmm. and everybody else's to gain. America, if it woke up collectively tomorrow, would not lose and would still be the number one in so many things. But on the path that it seems to be going um, and this divide and conquer and putting everybody against everybody over every single issue, most of which I disagree with you, Liz, most of them don't matter. And on the broad scope of things, they just don't matter. What matters is, do you want, you know, do you want to hold your position as the preeminent position or not? And if you don't, okay, carry on. Because literally China, it's in China's hands to take it over. Well, they can out outproduce, out manufacture, out I mean their population is five times the size of, of America, you know. So I, I think that I you know, look, I'm just like people be as long as they're good, you know, who cares what people want to be, right? Who cares? But right now there's all this. You know, well, China cares. China cares. Right. China loves all this diversity. China loves all the fact that you guys are arguing with each other over everything. So yeah. they, you know, it, it benefits China massively. These other countries, they don't, these other big ones that want to take down the U.S., they don't have these issues. Okay. No. I'm not saying that it's right that they don't have these issues. They don't have these issues because they're oppressed. Right. Women or, you know, have to wear hijabs. And and I'm going to call a hit on that, because remember when we did that video and everybody thought, oh, this is going to be the freedom train. This is it for women. And I said, no, you you asked me the questions, Mr. Shakespeare. And I said, no, there's a lot more executions to come. Well, there were. Um, so I'm going to call a hit on that. This wasn't the freedom train for women at all. This was. We will shut you up and we will use force to do so. I'm not saying that that is the way that any country should be run, but our freedoms, we're pitting them against one another when we should be working on solutions. Okay. There's, a lot of hits. There's a lot of hits I could call. Um, so many, we, I just, we do, we, I do so much content. I can't even, I can't even keep up anymore. There's no point. <laughs> you, the audience keeps up with the hits and somebody messaged me today. Oh, Liz, have you seen the latest news? Now they're saying there isn't a possible implosion right away. And wow, I actually do think that you were talking to those people on the submersible. Now the other experts are coming out saying, no, there was no way that thing imploded when it came down to the bottom. You know, whatever. No remote viewer, not one remote viewer got an implosion. Why? Because remote viewers were connecting to the target. Not making, you know, guess, guesswork at it. We're connecting to the target. We're reporting what's coming back. And don't forget, most of the other remote viewers out there are working double blind. Uh, okay, anything else from you, Mr. Shakespeare? No, that's all we've got.